Hello out there, and welcome to our very first calculus video. We're going to start this video with a little bit of review just as uh, for some notation here, and then we're going to talk about this idea called limits, which are a really important idea uh, for most of our class here, but particularly in the beginning. So recall that for a function here, if I have a function y equals f of x, f of x right here, f of x represents the y value of the function at a particular x value. So if I gave you an example here, so here I'm going to have f of x be x minus 4 right here. If I have f of x equals x minus 4, if I pick the x value of 1, nothing particularly special about 1 right here, I'm, that's just the number that I happen to pick. If I take that number and plug it in for my function, I, or I take x equals 1 and plug that in for x, excuse me, 1 minus 4 gives me negative 3. So in other words, f of 1 is equal to negative 3, pardon the typo there. Um, so what that means is that my x value, oops, my x value is 1, my y value is negative 3. This is a point on the graph of f of x. And I just want to make sure we understand this notation because it is going to be important for us when we talk about limits here. So one more quick example for review. It says use the graph of the function g of x to complete the table. So here I have a bunch of different x values over here. I've got negative 2 and 0 and 1. And I'm going to use uh, the graph of the function that I have right here, which is 1 half x plus 2, um, and see if I can figure out uh, the g of x values or the y values here. So let's just start with negative 2 here. So when I look at negative 2, that's an x value. So I say, okay, here is x equals negative 2. What's the y value? Well, the y value that corresponds to my graph, this point right here has a y value of positive 1. So g of negative 2 is equal to 1. And then essentially I'm going to be repeating this process for the rest of these x values here. So let me clean this up so we don't get distracted by it. Um, so let's see, and an x value of 0, so here is the graph at 0. What's the y value of our graph right there? Well, our y value there looks like 2. Next up is 1, so here at x equals 1, here it might be a little bit tricky because we're part way between 2 and 3, right? We're not at an actual value, so you might have to do a little bit of estimating here. I'd say, okay, if, well, if we're halfway between 2 and 3, I think that 2.5 would be a very good estimate. And so on for these. So let's keep going. Oops. 4. Let's see, 4 over here, my y value here, my y value is 4. At 3, looks like my y value is halfway between 3 and 4, so let's say 3.5. And at negative 1, negative 1, here's my point right here. What y value does that have? Looks like we'll say 1.5 here. So this exercise was just to help us remember, okay, what uh, what does g of x or f of x refer to? Well, it refers to a y value here. So let's get into it. Let's start talking about limits. Let's get into the calculus stuff here. So here's the definition of a limit. It says we write the limit, so I'm gonna talk about how this is read. This says the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to L, or alternatively, this is just another way we could phrase it here. We say f of x approaches L as x approaches c. Most likely we'll be using this first definition. This is how I'm going to write all of my problems, but you may see that second form pop up from time to time. So again, this says the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to L. If f of x gets close to L as x gets close to c from both sides here. So here we're going to look at a, a nice function here to work with. We have f of x equals x plus 2. We want to find each limit here. So here in this first one, in part a, I've got limit as x approaches 2. Oops, limit as x approaches 2. 
of f of x. So here I'm gonna find my y value. And now the thing that's gonna be really tricky about this and hopefully the next example will help us, we can't just look at what this point is. That's actually what's going to make these problems, what's, that's what makes the limit different than if we go back and look at the second example here, the value of the function. Those two things mean two very different things. So, so we're gonna have to try and split those apart in our minds here and, and we'll look at some examples that will help us practice. Instead, I would say, okay, here is x equals two and you could maybe find that point and say, okay, what's my function doing around two? So think about if I was tracing this function, if I was getting closer and closer to x equals two, and I wanna think about it from both sides right here. If I get closer and closer to two from both sides, it looks like I'm approaching this point right here. It's okay, it's approaching that point. So what's the y value of that point? That point has a y value of four. So I would say that the limit as x approaches two is equal to four. All right, so let's keep going here. Let's erase these, oops. Now, in part B here, I wanna look at, let's change colors. Now I wanna look at the limit as X approaches zero this time. So again, I don't want to necessarily just say, well, here's the point. Here, I wanna think about what's happening as my function gets closer and closer to zero. What Y value are we approaching? And in this case here, we're approaching this point right here, which I've highlighted in yellow, it looks like that point has a y value of two. So it's not what is the y value, it's what y value are you getting closer and closer to. Let's do a couple more here. Go back to blue. Limit as x approaches negative three of f of x. So here is negative three right here. So as I get closer and closer to negative three from both sides right here, I'm getting closer and closer, it looks like, to this point right here. And well, the y value of that point looks like is negative one. So my limit is equal to negative one. And then we've got one more to talk about here. Let's look at negative one here. So as X approaches negative one here. So this time as I approach negative one from both sides, well, I'm approaching this point right here that I've highlighted in yellow. It looks like I'm approaching a Y value of one. So my limit here in this case is positive one. So if you have a, a really nice function, then sure, the, the value of the limit is usually equal to the value of the function. But we're not always dealing with nice functions, and when I ask limit questions, those aren't the interesting questions to ask about. I will probably be asking about functions that are not so nice. Perhaps I'll be asking about, oh, something like this here. So here I have a bunch of different limit questions that I want to go over. Um, here I have this weird piecewise defined function f of x here and there's all these holes and jumps and there's a lot of things happening here. So I wanna just go through each one of these so that we can really get into um, what a limit is and how it differs from the value of the function so that we can get a better understanding of what makes these two things different and what each of them tell us. So let me do this in red. So we're gonna start with A and B here. I'm gonna take these two in pairs. So here we wanna talk about negative one. So here in part A, limit as X approaches negative one. So here is my X value of negative one. So if I were to trace my function and get closer and closer to an X value of negative one from both sides, here it looks like I'm approaching this point right here. Okay, well what's the Y value of that point? The Y value of this point is negative three. So that works out pretty nicely here. Let me see if I can erase some of this stuff. Oops, a little bit too much. Okay, oops, there we go. 
All right. Now, f of negative 1 just says, OK, what is the function? What's the y value of the function at negative 1? So if I say, OK, here at negative 1, what's my y value? I'm going to say, OK, here's my point. That point has a y value of negative 3. So we really like it when the value of the limit at a particular x value is equal to the value of the function. That leads to a lot of really nice properties. It, it just overall makes our problem easier to deal with. Later on, we'll be able to do cool calculus stuff with it. Um, but unfortunately, that's not always the case here. So next, let's look at positive 1 here. Let's see if I can erase some of this. Oops. A little bit too much. There we go. OK. So if I wanted to talk about negative, or excuse me, positive 1 this time, let's do this in green. If I want to talk about positive 1 here, so here is positive 1. If I'm approaching positive 1, so I'm approaching that x value, this x value right here, well, it looks like I'm approaching a y value of, it looks like, negative 1. So it looks like I'm approaching that point. And if I were to look at f of 1, f of positive 1, here it looks like I have a point on my graph right there that is the y value of the function. So uh, f of 1 is also equal to negative 1. Again, we really like it when this happens. It makes things just a whole lot nicer and easier for us to, to work with. Let me erase some of this and I'll try and get just the parts that I want here. Perfect. Okay. So now let's go back to right here. Now I want to look at zero. So here at zero, so at the y-axis, what's going on? This is going to be the first kind of interesting thing to happen here. This is going to be our first like really big different yeah, something, you know, it's, it's not quite so obvious here. So limit as x approaches zero. So here if I want to say, okay, what y value am I approaching if we're getting closer and closer to zero from both sides? So this one's kind of interesting because it looks like I'm getting closer and closer to this point right here that I've highlighted in yellow. But you might be saying, well, geez, Mr. H, that point right there, that's a hole. That open circle, that's a hole. That means your function does not exist there. And you're absolutely right. But this is one of the first times we're going to see the value of the limit be different than the value of the function. The value of the limit, I don't really care what's happening at that point. So it doesn't really matter to me if there's a hole or an open circle or a closed circle or whatever. I, I don't care what's happening exactly at x equals 0. I care what are these red arrows pointing towards? What are these red arrows getting closer and closer to? Well, they're getting closer and closer to a y value of negative 2. I have a hole there at negative 2, so they're just getting closer and closer to that hole. So when I talk about f of 0, though, that is a very different story now. So when we talk about f of 0 here, f of 0, you would say, OK, I might look at this function. Here I've got a hole right here at that point, And there's no close circle to make up for that. There is no point on my graph at x equals 0. So in this case, we would say that f of 0, we could either say that that is undefined or does not exist. So does not exist or undefined. You only need to say one of them, and essentially they mean the same thing. I'll most of the time use does not exist because I'm lazy and I like to write DNE, but if you use undefined by all means, that's totally acceptable as well. G here, let's look at G, and actually just to highlight what just happened, this is kind of really interesting. Here we have the limit as x approaches 0 is negative 2. But the value of the function at 0 does not exist. This is the first time we've ever seen this happen. And we're going to see other weird stuff happen with the rest of this problem. So next, we're looking at limit as x approaches 2 here. So limit as x approaches positive 2 this time. So again, I'm thinking about, OK, what's happening as I get closer and closer to positive 2? I've got another hole in my graph again. So I know from the last problem that 
for the limit, right, because this is what I'm looking at first, I'm looking at the limit as x approaches 2, I don't really care about the behavior at my function, or excuse me, the behavior of my function exactly at 2. I care about what are these green arrows pointing at? What are they getting closer and closer to? Well, they're getting closer and closer to that hole, which has a y value of 0. So they're getting closer and closer to this point right here has a y value of 0. So we'll say our limit as x approaches 2 is equal to 0. When we contrast that with f of 2 here, f of 2, so now we care about, well, what's the y value of our function at, oops, at 2? So you'll say, okay, well, there's a hole right here. I know that's not the point. You're going to look, okay, if we have a hole, you might want to look for, are there any other y values where we have a closed circle at that same x value? And you'll say, well, we've got one right there. That's the value of my function at x equals 2. So I'll look at that and I'll say, okay, my, that function, oops, that point, excuse me, has a y value of positive 3 here. So f of 2 is equal to positive 3. So this is also pretty interesting here. If I look at parts g and h, here I had the limit was equal to 0. And then in part h, the value of the function was equal to 3. So they both existed. They were just two completely different numbers. So that's pretty interesting. Let's keep going. Let's see what else happens here. Limit as x approaches 4. So let's look at 4. Let me erase this so that we're not distracted by it. All right, so limit as x approaches 4. So this time here, we're looking at this x value. So as I get closer and closer to 4, this is, well, kind of problematic. We haven't really seen this happen before. And I've been drawing these arrows on the left and the right hand side of our x values, and, and, and that's really important here. I haven't really talked about that up until this point. We'll, we'll talk more about that later. But what we care about for the limit, the limit is just like a function. We kind of want one answer here. We don't want to say, well, it depends, right? It depends on whether you're coming from the left-hand side or if, you, if you're coming from the right-hand side. Because if I approach from the left-hand side, if I approach from the left-hand side, I'm approaching this point right here. looks like it has a y value of positive 1. But if I approach from the right-hand side, I'm approaching this hole. looks like it has a y value of negative 3. And I, it wouldn't be very mathematical of us, for lack of a better word, to say, well, the limit is positive 1 and negative 3. No, we want one right answer. We want one answer for this limit. So in this case, if the two sides don't agree, if your left, uh, left-hand arrow is pointing at a different y value than your right hand arrow, then we're just going to say, you know what, this limit, it just does not exist. That limit does not exist or is undefined here. So if you have your function kind of not meeting at the same point or at the same y value, then the limit at that x value does not exist. And that's sort of how we get around that. But if I look at f of 4, and let me just erase these arrows again. So f of 4, we're going to look for that closed circle. So here I have an open circle. I know that that's, that, uh, that means that there's a hole at, for my function at that x value. So I know that my function is not defined there, but I do have a closed circle right here at, let's see, uh, my y value there looks like 1. So f of 4 is equal to a positive 1. So here I have, oops, the limit does not exist, but the value of the function does. So again, just to kind of show that these two things mean very, very, very different things. All right, K and L, we're just working our way through the alphabet here. K and L, now we're talking about a y value of negative, oops, excuse me, a x value of negative 3. So negative 3 right here. So negative 3, let's see, as I approach negative 3 from the left and from the right, here it looks like I'm approaching this point, and it looks like that point has a y value. Oh, I guess I didn't do a great job of graphing that, huh? 
Um, let's say about between negative 2 and negative 3. Let's just call it negative 2.5. If I don't give you something that's exact like that, then you can, of course, estimate it. And here it looks like there is, and it's kind of hard to see because I've drawn so much there, but it looks like, hey, if I wanted to look at the value of my function at negative 3, it would have the same exact y value that we were just talking about of negative 2.5. So, okay, in this case, we're back to, okay, we like it when this happens. We have uh, the limit at negative 3 is equal to the value of the function at negative 3. Let's look at one more here. Let's look at the behavior at negative 4. And let's change our color one more time here. So at negative 4, let's erase these. At negative 4, let's look at the limit first. So here is x equals negative 4. If I approach negative 4 from the left-hand side, it looks like I'm approaching a y value of 2. If I approach negative 4 from the right-hand side, it looks like I'm approaching a y value of about negative 2. So what did we, we said if the two parts of our graph, right, if the left part of our graph doesn't meet up at the same point or the same y value as the right part of our graph, in this case we'll say that the limit does not exist, right? It just, we wouldn't say 2 and negative 2. We're just going to say, you know what, that limit does not exist or is undefined here. So we'll just say does not exist. If you want to write undefined, you can, you can do that as well. f of negative 4 finally here. So f of negative 4 here I would be looking for any closed circles, but here this is a hole at x equals negative 4, so I know my function does not exist there. Here's another hole at x equals negative 4, so I know that my function does not exist there. And there are no closed circles to show that our function exists anywhere at x equals negative 4. So again, this is kind of interesting. Here we had the limit does not exist, but also the function does not exist at negative 4 as well because there is no closed circle. The function is simply just not defined at negative 4. So we would say that f of negative 4 also does not exist or is undefined. So this is a really, really good example for you to take a look at. I would go back, I would study this, I would practice this problem on your own because this really forces you to understand that the limit and the value of the function are not related. So you can have one be defined and the other not, or vice versa. You can have them both be defined, but have two completely different y values, or maybe neither one is defined. So there's a lot of different possibilities here. Um, I think that this is understanding limits visually and graphically is, is the best way to start. So I would encourage you to try some of these practice problems in the homework before you move on because this is really going to help us understand exactly what a limit is and that's going to be really really important for the next three or so sections going forward.